This week's episode of the multiple award-winning, multiple award-winning Here For It podcast is brought to you by Striking Vipers. Seriously? <laughs> wow. Why is that game not on Amazon or GameStop yet? That's what I'm really trying to figure out because I want to be I'm fucking... On break. Some, you want to be fucking... Oh, okay. I want to be fucking some anime characters. Yes. You already went on break and we already... Be what if we, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I feel seen. I feel red. I too <laughs> want to have virtual reality sex with strange anime characters uh-huh. and uh, Amazon and GameStop. I would like y'all to bring it to me. Thank you. And switch roles because um, saw um, Black Melter from Aquaman. He was fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abdul. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> he was fishing down to the um And he loved anime. it. He was like, listen, I've had orgasms as a boy, and then I've had orgasms as a girl, and <laughs> <laughs> listen, the fireworks go off when you got a pussy. <laughs> when it hit like you got a pussy, it goes off. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about episode one of season five of Black Mirror. Y'all have probably already seen it because it's been out forever, and we took a break, so y'all definitely had time to go see it. I because I had an extra week. Y'all had plenty of time to see it. How did you guys feel about the episode? Let us know in the comments wherever you are listening. We definitely want to know what you guys thought of Black Mirror. That yeah, the only thing that I wish that we got that we didn't get was more of a passionate kiss between the two. Because I felt it in my spirit. I felt it in my balls that uh, a kiss was going to happen. Like passionate where we were going to see some cuppage or some cake. Like Anthony Mackie got a fat ass. Whoa, you want this to be some Sean Cody. It's not even a black um, uh, house. We don't want it to be no Sean Cody. Gross. <laughs> uh, a, I, I don't want, no, I'm fine. It could be Ross City Twinks. You probably wanted it to be one of them cabin trips. <laughs> Child. We tired um, of the cabin trip. Oh, can I say that? Maybe. We're not endorsed by any of them, so it doesn't matter. I'm tired of the cabin trip. Welcome back to Here for a Podcast, um, you guys. Your <laughs> podcast about everything black and gay, yeah. including mental health and sexual health and social commentary about things going on in the world. My name oh. is oh. the Superman T H E E S U P A M A N, aka the unashamed to be called Uncle Martell. BKA, the defender of dark skin. My name is Ronald Matters. Follow me on the internet at Ronald Matters. And of course, the award winning RonaldMatters.com. The girls, what awards they got? What awards they Come see, we be state. We was just, I said we was just, we were just um, honored by Spreaker during their um, Pride Month festivities. Thank you so much to Spreaker and thank you to everybody else. Who be um, giving us love and shout outs Wow That cough sounded fake I'm a Virgo <laughs> So I mean I'm very good at what I do I was oh. being an actress mm. Yeah It's in the details All those roles you have <laughs> <laughs> Back roles uh, uh, Alright <laughs> You can also find me at American Eagle um, our icebreaker this week again. Happy Pride Month, bitches! We got one yeah. more week left, and then they take all the rainbow shit down and pretend that they didn't care about us. Like they, they take did. the rainbow logo off. I'm like, girl, it's August. Y'all still got this on the shelf? Mm. It's on discount then. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Happy Pride Month again. Um, enjoy this time period when it's semi okay in Yo, this y'all country. Pretend like they like you. Yeah. Um, but enjoy this time period because July hit and they were like, girl, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so enjoy this time period. Our icebreaker this week is um, Joy Behar said something really eloquent on The View last week. And I wanted to uh, bring it to our runway here. OK. Um, she said, I can forgive the Trump voter, but I, I can't forgive Trump. Could you or should we forgive the Trump voters? What do you got? You know, they say like training starts at home. Um, and so when you're trained that way by the generation before you, and then they pass on their teachings to not season your greens and don't put no pepper on your chicken. Okay, so I mean, it's like not even like fuck that you, generation. It's the generation before you. It's like don't don't put no paprika in your corn in your um dressing, and it's like. Whatever goes in dress, look, I don't cook. But you know, like, it's the generation. It's not even the generation I'm looking at. It's the generation behind that generation. 
And so it's like, am I really forgiving the person in front of me or am I really blaming ITT Institute or am I really blaming um, ICDC College? Because, I mean, this person in front of me is a product of their upbringing. So I'm, I have to forgive two people if that's the case. Um, and then so, uh, 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 cause like, I don't know about all that. <laughs> AOL has been out for a long time. Like the girls was getting floppy disks. They was putting them in their hard drives and like, they were like downloading this information and they were becoming better people. And so it's 2019 and you ain't learned nothing in 20 years. <laughs> mm-hmm. The generation, I mean, the, like these babies is 20 years old and they're still out here talking about some white power and. So dumb, they're going to get the tiki torches from the Home Depot. That's not how we lit fires in in the streets at night. Not with no tiki torches from the Home Depot. Who raised you? Wow. A nigga with a pussy? How disgraceful. Okay. And not only the real Cardi fans know what song it's from. And so... Um, there are real Cardi fans out there? That is... <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to answer that was a real Cardi lyric. But... <laughs> so, like, when you have to forgive the Trump voter... You also have to forgive the person who raised them to get to the booth where they could mark that as their answer. Okay. How many people I got to forgive? It might be half this country. 53% of white women. Mm. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> um. So for me, my answer is a resounding no. Was this ser- too serious for here for? I don't know. No, no, no. Because, no. I mean, just, this is a serious the topic. They're, they're about to get a chance to do... That original sin again Mm -hmm. And This time they really have to stand up in it And say okay I did it last time because girl I was white and angry But now what's your What's your What's your animus behind this argument now Yeah, Because now you were white and angry You got the tax cut that you wanted You got these supreme court justices that you want They didn't get the tax cut they wanted The the corporations got the tax cut they want. Well, yeah. Well, there's that shade. But um, (laughs) they got the perceived things that they wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, this rebuke of a black president to give us the whitest fucking president that we've Mm -hmm. had uh, with the most privilege and the least amount of experience. So they got that. What's your reason for doing it again after you've seen what the fuck he did with the White House now? Um, So my, my answer is no. Um, when you put your taxes and your religion above the survival of me and my community and our rights, that is unforgivable to me. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Um, none of those should should come before the life of an American citizen or the rights of an American citizen. Those should be unalienable. Those should be things that we all have in common and we all fight to keep for each other. And then everything else we can fight each other about. Like if you, if we are family and we live in the same house. I'm not going to be fighting you for the last French fry. We you should be sharing the last French out of fry. my house, and we can argue about that. But if a bitch at your school hits you, then she got you fucked up and me fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> that's a united front. We're supposed to be the United States of America, but we ain't got no united front because we got some people that think that others aren't as American as them because their skin is browner or they fuck different people. What I, recently, Donald Trump was like, "Oh yeah, I love President Xi of China." Um, we had chocolate cake together, and it was such an amazing experience. And then, goddamn it, President Xi from China just got off the plane with fucking Russia, hanging out over there. Uh, so, oh, you like chocolate cake? Oh, well, m- me and Russia, we got other plans. And we're gonna tease your ass with a little cake. And then we're gonna strike. Whoa. Don't be dumb. Yeah, I don't know about all that yet. Um, but I can I can listen <clears throat> to. The Republican positions, if they are willing to evolve, and not Sarah willing- McCain's. I can't listen to hers. I can't. Sarah McCain. <sighs> Megan. I told you her name is Sarah McCain on this podcast. <laughs> but if they're willing to evolve, can their I position- speak? Can I talk? Part of your job is to listen to me. If I said that to you are here for a podcast, girl, this podcast episode. <laughs> Y'all will go a whole nother it week. Not even, <laughs> Y'all will go a whole nother week. It wouldn't even episode. be sal- sa- Oh, that's the big word. Salvageable. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Y'all go a whole nother week with our <laughs> podcast episode. There will be charges filed. Um, but I, but I think that I'm willing to only talk with conservatives that are willing to um, evolve their opinions past what their opinions have been for the last fifty yeah. years. Um, when you are comfortable with racism, xenophobia, homophobia. Then no, I can't forgive that. That's unforgivable for me. Um, 
And don't get your hair relaxed every four to six months. I can't. What? Get a new cut, a new color. You gotta go get your oh, hair. Okay. Di- you gotta go get your hair seen. I was about. gonna say, there's nothing wrong with naturals. The girl's the- hair be stringy and it don't lay flat. Oh. And you want to talk about what's going on down to the bank oh. in the treasury department, ma'am? Ain't no treasury going on at your house. Ain't no shade, baby. <laughs> ain't no shade. What are you doing? What is this you got on? Tell me some other people don't deserve rights. You don't have the right to be walking around looking like this. Ouch. And that's with the game. It's always somebody that don't be looking like nothing. But I'm going too far. I'm going to shut my fat ass up. <laughs> <clears throat> that is our icebreaker this week. Our word of the day. W E R D. I ain't broke. My mood is not. <laughs> okay, come on. Our word of the day. W E R D is opia. I need my fan. O P I A. Opia. Opia means the ambiguous intensity of looking someone in the eye, which can feel simultaneously invasive and vulnerable. So, you know, when you're staring across at someone and you can kind of like see into who they are or if they're looking back at you and they can probably see into who you are or they're checking out your aura. The word for that is opia, O-P-I-A. So, someone using their ocular ability to clock a lot of things about you. I have been guilty of this a long motherfucking time. And some of it was intentional and some of it was unintentional. But <laughs> Hi. The edible. No. You serve an opia teas and you was mm-hmm. just. No, when I'm high, I don't. Mm-mm. I don't even. You don't perceive. Like you high. You don't know. No, when I'm high, I don't practice like that. Like I only practice like that when I'm not. You looking high. at somebody seductively and oh no, when I'm looking at some somebody seductively and I'm high, they know I want to fuck. When I'm sober, I'm like mm, he don't know, but I'm just gonna I'm going. I'm really to, judging those. James. I'm gonna incept him into knowing you're about to take this dick, even if he got on capri jeans in 2019. Oh yeah, this capri denim was very for me and was very. I'm down with it. Yeah. She probably can take that. Uh, well, shout out to Striking Vipers because they were giving it at the dinner table. Um, so, we're like, I'm going to go get my world famous dessert out the damn oven. And he was like, I'm about to get my world famous dessert right here. At this table. <laughs> he was serving opia realness. He was like, You don't miss it. <laughs> you don't I know you about miss it. it. I, I know like, you miss it. I fucked a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Amazon, <laughs> this is an opportunity. I could be out here fucking polar bears and y'all stopping my bag. NVIDIA, somebody, girl. E3 just happened. What y'all done announced? Opia, our word <laughs> of the day. W-E-R-D. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to two homos, two black homos. For I'm not two- black. I'm transracial. We are going to get there. Like- <laughs> I- <laughs> nope. <laughs> Give me, I got five minutes and I'm going to get there. Um, thank you for supporting these two black homos because uh, Ooh, a lot of black homos so do not get uh, supported at all and Uh-oh. definitely not for this long. And we appreciate you for supporting us this long and staying with us even when we snatch the cat back and don't do an episode for a week. Look, I'm going to get, hold on. <laughs> so we've been doing this for two Full years. Not me. I was. This there. is a girl. Shut up. <laughs> this is a real job, and this is not for free. This costs money. Um, if you would like to support this podcast, please get over to our Patreon, where we have weekly content. We're gonna have some extremely awesome content for you next week. Um, that will be worth every dollar. And so at least for one dollar a month, you can be on our Patreon. You can get that exclusive content. You can talk directly with us, have weekly discourses, um, and you can get uh, content that we will not release other ways first. So my very first YouTube video of 2019, she's going to be on Patreon. But how do you cook your macaroni? I want to learn that on Patreon. Uh, do you bake it? Uh, the, see, do you cook it on the stove? That's gonna be for the here for it hive. But how many? How so many the here for it hive is in your macaroni. The here for it hive <laughs> are members that are at twenty five dollars and above, and so I'd be willing to share the macaroni and cheese <laughs> and my fried chicken yeah. um, and my salmon recipes with them. Now, if you pay a dollar, uh oh, 
We can talk about other stuff. We should talk about stuff like that on our page. I think that's. Oh, I just. Mm. Okay. So if you would like to pay a nigga ah. and support this podcast, get over to our Patreon. Happy Juneteenth. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you have a business to promote and you would like it promoted on this podcast, also DM your business to us. And we will do some negotiations and maybe your business can be promoted here on this podcast every week. Um, we would love your support. If you can support financially, if you cannot, please leave um, five star reviews on Apple Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts uh-huh. as well as liking every episode and commenting on, oh. on the parts that you feel are comment worthy. Engagement tease. I'm please. proud of you. Um, it motivates us to continue these episodes, continue giving we had a everything question. that we give and continue doing the work in the community that needs to be done that some people don't want to do. I was asking you earlier, was it on Twitter? But I think it was on SoundCloud. Okay. I got to do my listening. Qu- I'm still wrapping up the listening questions because I asked everywhere for the listener questions so we could do them. So Yeah. Um, while you look that up, our affirmation this week is take... A motherfucking break. Take a knee from anything in life that demands you to be on fire on all cylinders at all times. Oh, Chad, your car, your muffler gonna break. <laughs> Literally, that's where we're going. I don't know what a muffler is, but I'm like, something gonna break. Your alternator gonna go out. Girl, it's gonna be, it's something that you didn't even know was on the car. It's the, and then the people gonna tell you about it, it's gonna cost $2,000. I'm like, I ain't got $2,000. A break does not mean a sabbatical or never coming back to whatever you took a break from. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a break can keep you from breaking down. Amen. It's Pride Month, and we took a small little breather to come back to you lovelies, refreshed and recharged. Please forgive us for our absence, but know that even though we weren't in your ear holes last week, we were still doing the work for our community and for ourselves Child. at the same damn time. Child. That Andy is our Superman told me what we were doing, and I was like, "Oh wow, we coming back with a vengeance!" Dang. Yeah. Um. So know that even if you didn't hear from us last week, uh, that didn't mean that we were not doing something. We were very active. We were in the planning processes and making changes in the community. Uh, that you'll see. So that is our affirmation this week. Thank you guys again so much. Um. We'll come back around to the question. Oh no, well listen to questions are thin, so Okay. Last week we talked about Ah, not last week. <laughs> the last week y'all heard from us. <laughs> that last... shade wrote itself. <laughs> the I last... can give that shade it's a moment. <laughs> it ooh, covered the room. <laughs> the last week y'all heard from us. Uh we talked about the announcement of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera's monument for their pioneering achievements at Stonewall and um it's still Things, is a moment things. that deserves its roses because flowers bring they, them. They have been gone, and their story lives on through their monuments and through this story. Lilies, tulips, and, daisies, and sunflowers. And this is how we teach Put the people the coming behind us because the people coming behind us through media don't know what their effect was in Stonewall. There's a whole fucking movie out there, and they don't even mention these two women's names. You threw shade at that. <laughs> I, I, the first pride was a riot. I think I said that too. Like, yes. girl, it, the first pride was girl. We threw bricks at the police. <laughs> it wasn't no. And now we throw shade and flags. <laughs> but <laughs> some some of the up and coming gays and queens. Look at your lingo, up and coming. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get there as well. Um, up and coming po- uh, queens. <laughs> oh, shit. Up and coming queens and gays. They don't know that, unfortunately. Yeah. They didn't watch the movies. They don't know the Paris is Burnings. They don't know the two on You gotta have on an article, a male don't... article of clothing if you're dressed as a woman. Yes. Um, to not be arrested and accosted mm-hmm. back in those days. So those are stories that we need to tell every year. It should be like an anniversary for us to tell those stories every June. So hey, Every Thanksgiving, Big Mama got a story. Every Black History Month, we talk about Harriet Tubman. And she's still like... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Flowers, roses, <laughs> tulips. Bring Harry her things. Yes, bring Harry. Her dollar bills. Shit. Um, she carried the girls literally. Yeah. And Portia Stewart don't even know that it wasn't a real fucking railroad, and she a damn. 
She's alive. That's what Portia Stewart is. Anyway, <laughs> this week Janet Mock is adding to the extraordinary legacy. Can of, I clap? Does yes. it hurt the? Go for the, it. The um, Give I'm it. trying to see if it hurts the listeners. We're gonna do this as well as clap. Janet Mock, give her her things. Slay Janet Mock, we're absolutely here for it. Um, she's adding to the extraordinary legacy of trans women of color by being the first out trans woman director, producer, and writer signed to a sweeping deal with Netflix. The deal is said to be multi millions of dollars for her to bring um, the streaming giant exclusive rights to her TV series and a first look option at feature film projects. That she writes, directs, and produces herself. Meaning, one, the first job is her being the director, producer, and writer that is a black trans woman that we don't get many of in the first place. So that's one job Netflix already nailed right there. Uh All the other jobs that she's going to do, if you know and you see what she's doing with Pose, if you don't think she's going to continue that, and hiring trans people of color and even hiring some of the same trans people of color that she's already got hired. There's no reason why MJ Rodriguez or Dominique can't come over to Netflix and get another check for something else that she's doing because that's what these white companies do. Christian Bale ain't that great of a goddamn actor. Girl, Jessica Chastain. Je- <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, they 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 follow the Who same director. Ugly fat boy that was in Long Shot with that other girl. He was in Ch- Shirley Theron was playing the president. Seth, Seth Rogen. Rogen. Seth Rogen keeps getting put in stuff, and I don't know what is going on. They have they have relationships with these directors, and these directors don't look at their last box offices and say, "Well, just come on over to my That's next my project." Friend. That's my friend, and so we are getting an opportunity to have a friend in the room in Janet Mock. Come on. And so in Janet Mock being the friend in the room and saying, okay, I see this space. Y'all have given me X amount of millions of dollars to execute these visions. Y'all want to see um, trans stories, people of color stories brought to TV. I know a girl. She said multiple, I know several multiple girls. years, multiple projects. She's like, I can tell y'all about two of them because these are going to be the first two up. But girl, look, coin. Yeah. Budgets. So she has a three year deal. So over the next three years, we're going to be getting all kind of content produced, directed, or written by Janet Mock. And I'm absolutely here. Oh, girl. Well, (laughs) hopefully it's less problematic than anything that Tyler Perry has ever done. Um, But I'm excited for the next three years on Netflix. It makes me very interested um, to continue subscription because Netflix is still the only streaming platform that you just got to have. If you uh-huh. don't have Netflix, girl, what are you uh-huh. looking at? If you ain't got somebody else Netflix, girl, what are you doing? It's, it's nothing in com- comparison um, for Netflix at this moment. Uh, DC wants to have their own CBS. They're canceling shows already. DC Universe app just launched. And they just canceled Swamp Thing. And they said that was the best thing on it. And it was ve- being viewed. Um, so, <laughs> I, you know, I'm excited to put the, the viewership behind something that is by a trans woman mm-hmm. for a trans community. Take my 14 for, a month. For Thank people of color. Even if that's the only thing I watch on Netflix all year long next year, fine. Oh, okay. We'll say that, I'll say that at the end of the show. Okay. Mm. Um. So I wanted to start off with that positive trans story because the next one is um not a good news story for um the black trans community uh especially here in the dmv um literally right before we uh started this podcast um we were at casa ruby um talking about uh different things that we could do for um, donations to the clientele of Casa Ruby. And if, again, if you don't know what Casa Ruby is, because you haven't listened to every episode of Here For a Podcast, it is a homeless shelter uh, for at risk teen and y- teens and young adults um, that specializes in Latino and Spanish populations mm-hmm. um, that Black and don't fully speak all of the languages, maybe refugees. Um, have probably been kicked out of homes are the most underserved in this community full stop I'm not going to say period because girl (laughs) 
full stop. Like when we talk about <laughs> when we talk about the the end, like the most picked on, the most marginalized of the community, it is these kids at this homeless shelter. Mm-hmm. It is not. I ain't even gonna throw no more shade. Chow, it is chow. not other pla- places or chow, other people. Chow. But one of their own was killed, and um, I thought it was a great time for us to be present and to show a helping hand because sometimes um, in the room. Definitely. The LGBTQIA plus plus community forgets about the T part Ooh. and only thinks about the G part or only thinks about the L part that they belong to. Just that one in ten uh, people in the LGBT spectrum, one in four identifies bisexual. Oh. Well, no, yeah. Well, that's five, a, a no. Gro- it was four to ten. What was the, that's growing. Get my stats together. Mm, damn, that's growing, but. Not consequential to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, police in Prince George's County identified the the body of a transgender woman who was killed in a shooting in Fairmont Heights in Fairmont Heights um, this weekend. And um, her name is Zoe Spears. She was 23 years old. She was a client of Casa Ruby, meaning she was an at risk uh, young adult mm-hmm. that had nowhere else to go. Uh, relied on places like Casa Ruby for shelter. For food, uh, for toiletries, for safety. Went to the Kiki Balls. Um, and she was shot multiple times on Eastern Avenue in Capitol Heights. Um, the community around Zoe is very close knit. Like they all know her. Uh, they all have similar stories, and so. I thought it was an extremely important topic to talk about because we talk about when they kill transgender women of color almost every time that it happens because no one else will talk about it as much as we will, unfortunately. It should be covered on every podcast. It should be covered on every news station. It should be covered on on every YouTuber's channel um, when it happens because... When we talk about the lowest common denominator of people that get shit on the most by the rest of their community, it is these women. We have people of our own community in the LGBT space that don't give a fuck that she got shot multiple times in Capitol Heights, murderer still on the loose. No one cares. There are no vigils planned. planned. Uh, there's there's no crowdfunding for her funeral. Uh, there is no rest in peace hashtags. If you can think about in the last month, we saw so many hashtags when um, young adults killed themselves. We're doing blue for Sudan right now. I think. Uh, yes. But people always say there you can do both is never, at the same time. Well, you, do can, both then. you can. You can. You can. But, do both but they're the not. And that's the issue that I'm having is we say that we can walk and chew bubblegum at the same time, but I still only see you walking and not chewing no bubblegum. So here, here for a podcast, we're going to walk and and chew bubblegum. If you are in the D.C. area uh, Friday evening after six, we're going to be at Casa Ruby. We're going to be doing donations. Um, We're going to be talking to some of the clients there and. Um, hopefully hearing some of their stories about Zoe and about what it's like to be a part of that community and hopefully being able to report some of that back to you. It's an unfortunate thing because just a few weeks ago, we were reporting on um, Ashanti Karman that was shot to death uh, also in the same area. And their stories are also very similar that they were extremely at risk. They were extremely, extremely in danger of being vulnerable to sex work and being in places that aren't the safest, but could guarantee that they would get enough money for whatever they wanted for the next day for survival. Not for, I just want to go to the mall and buy some shit. Not for, I'm trying to get a new car or I'm trying to get a new apartment. It's the I'm new trying Jays to, coming out. Or the new Jays. I'm trying to eat tomorrow. And so... June um, 21st, Casa Ruby, 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, 
there was another trans trans uh, woman that um, pleaded with the rest of the trans trans community via Washington for NBC. Um, she did an interview where she said, "Please, please, please, just don't go there." Talking about this area in um, Capitol, Capitol Heights. Heights called Fairmont Heights on Eastern Avenue, where. Uh, I don't know what the politically correct term for it is because I'm old, and so in our olden days we used to call it a host roll. I was going to say the. I think it's still called the host roll. I don't right? know if it's, is it still. Called? I don't know if there's a more politically. In Memphis, it was correct. the host roll, and so educate us if it's not. Yes, please. Uh, to my knowledge, it was the host my, roll. Old, my old ass has always been the host roll. I lived around whether the corner it was, from the host roll. You no, know, the host roll was at the bus stop right outside your building when you was in Memphis. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> It, and it didn't matter. It was not just transgender women. It no. was um, straight bad bitches, straight heterosexual women, <laughs> yeah. as well on the same host role. It was bad bitches. Um, and I assume in this area, it's it's similar. Um, Three o'clock in the morning. What is all that noise downstairs? Bitch, this is my block. Get off my block. I was like, oh shit, I got work in the morning. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to be a part of the solution, yeah, uh, we'll be out Friday. I know this is going to air Thursday morning, tomorrow morning. Um, but if you are in the area, Friday after 6 p.m., we will be at Casa Ruby. Um, yeah, if you just want to be a part of something positive in the area, we'll be doing that. Um, rest in power and rest in peace, uh, Zoe. Amen. And please... Please, please, please stay away from this area if you absolutely can. There have been two murders in the last 60 days of black trans women in this area. And typically, those things are not not connected. Mm. Okay. Um, this next one I'm going to be reading, but it's going to be a, it's, it's a lighter read. Okay. It's a lighter read. Is it about RuPaul's Drag Race? You no. love hating on RuPaul. Do I? My fave is innocent and not proof of guilty. Okay. <laughs> Richard Dolezal also <laughs> says... <laughs> what? Richard Dolezal also says that she too huh? likes to lick the poom poom every now and Pride then. Happy Pride Month, you guys. Again, you know, allegedly. We should accept everybody for who they are. I too am bisexual. I was like... I was with you, Rachel. I was like, Rachel done turned around. Rachel just gonna give Damn. a shout out. So here's the deal. That's the gist of what she said. So she took it down because I had the link and now I went to the link and the link said, girl. No, you know, you gotta do a screenshot with Rachel Dolan. <laughs> She's not one of those girls. Um, but the gist of this was Happy Pride Month. Happy I Pride um Month. I too am Except of the LGBT community. I am bisexual. She that was I at kissed the, the end. Girl. Yes. She uh, she clarified her bisexual nature by saying that she kissed a girl one time. Oh, the status had been updated twice. <laughs> she didn't updated the status. Very Katy Perry realness. <laughs> I kissed a girl, so she <laughs> updated the caption five times. Minimum. Put me in the put me in the LGBT community. I kissed a girl, and I liked it. Rachel, huh? Rachel, Rachel. Huh? I know that she's only doing this. For attention, she probably is doing another book or a cookbook. I want to say a Netflix. The her Rachel Divide braiding classes are coming along. Classes and she wants, low. Um, new members to the salon, but stop the salon. It. She was braided in in her house in her living room. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> truly, that's some of the best braiding that happens. Okay, if it's in somebody's kitchen. Okay, on a stool. I'm just saying. Anyway, Girl, um. My back. <sighs> She is the epitome of a band wagon ass bitch. In what ways? Give me an example. The wagon is it's Pride Month. There are so many people talking about pride. There's rainbows everywhere. People being proud, celebrating whatever part of the spectrum that they are on. And here come yo sis head ass talking about that you are something other than sis head. That you have always already been your whole life. Mm-hmm. There is no evidence or action to prove that you have been oh, anything gotta, other than success. Okay. No, she don't got to. Oh, I'm asking you. Dude. She don't. She don't got to. Mm-hmm. But she she put herself in the firing range for this goddamn tweet. She could have just been bisexual on her fucking own. 
especially with all of the trauma that her two young black sons have suffered because of I her trans want, raciality. I wouldn't want my sons to endure any more of the bull, especially when her son in her documentary was like, "I wish she would just say it." I fucked up because I want my life to go back to normal. I really want to go back to school and not have to deal with all this. Back like, to- and so if you if. If your transracialness is putting the kids out there, imagine what your transsexuality is going to do. What? Well, not even trans. It's bi- she's claiming bisexuality. Whatever it is. I'm, I'm saying the wrong word because I'm trying to do a play on transracial, but I'm child. The other thing is not. She's doing a play on transracial. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the point. And girl, right it's there. not a video game. <laughs> you, can, you can pick your own avatar. What are you doing? So that's what it is. She picked her own avatar twice. She picked the <laughs> black avatar first and was like, mm, that's not hitting on nothing. I'm going to be a black. Bye, girl. Bye, Bye girl. girl. Bye. <laughs> Bye. B y e. Get out. What? No. I'm not. Here Do for not it. grab on my coattails of being bisexual or anybody you else's coattails of being bisexual. Through. You do not. Know. Because if if that's not your identity and you know it's not your goddamn identity, you just using this for a fucking dollar. Get the fuck out the way. Even for the other white girl, um, who was. Tied up to the barn up in Wyoming, even for her own legacy. Don't be attaching yourself to nothing that nothing like that. Especially when you know. What was his name? The um young white man. We went to the play down in Mississippi, which I was like, it's in Mississippi while wow, we're going to Mississippi. We went to Old Miss. Is it about Ryan White? Uh uh-uh. uh. It was in um Wyoming. I'm gonna Google it. Hold on, Wyoming gay. Fence. Cause they tied him to the fence and everything. Oh, from the movie um, Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard. I mean, like she's just throwing dirt on Matthew Shepard's legacy. I mean, like as a mother of t- two boys, I mean, like you don't know what y- gay people go through. Like even from uh, the youth to um, Shelby killing himself, and we down here to the black gay pride having to. Living his honor to the person in Capitol Heights who was murdered last week. Trying to go to work. So there are people that are actually a part of the community and they're paying the price of being part of the community with their lives, with their livelihoods, with their homes, um, with their With their job opportunities. Because I don't get a lot of job opportunities because I present as fish woman. Confirmed. Uh, and, and so like there are people that really are part of this community and have to live and breathe in the community and take the good with the bad and you want to like fake, make this the last sentence of your post on instagram you want to fake my part life of the and my legacy is not the last sentence on your instagram post Girl. go away from me with this you can't buy the, you cannot buy bui the bi, the bi in LGBT. What? You, just you can, said. I, I did bars, nigga. Hate the game. Don't hate. Don't hate me. What? You cannot bui. Uh huh. What that spell? Bui. What that spell? Bui. B, that ain't what you said. But okay. Bui. Okay. You okay, cannot okay. buy. Okay. The bi, bi. Okay, that makes sense. In our me. community. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, Rich Dozal, get the fuck out of here. I this How needs to be the last. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. I said no, 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 no. I said no. Thank you. I can say it in Espanol. No. And y'all never gonna hear another run like that in your life. In your life. Here for a podcast. Make sure you. Are- Press the thumbs up or something. What'd you press? We got an outfit engagement. What do we do? Press these girls pretending to be bi. Press that. Press Cardi B for that. <laughs> for, for, that goddamn, for that goddamn single call. Press. press it Cardi came B. and went. Got his nut and went right on. Ain't Ooh. called back. Um, pose has happened, and I we know that go we do typically. A dissertation. So we doing episode one and two. We're gonna do episode one. And we're going to do episode 2 review for Patreon next week. That's generous. Yes. You're being generous. I know. Generous queen. Uh, yeah. Megatron come out tomorrow. Yeah. Well, today. because Next day. Okay. Comes out Friday. It comes out when you come out as bi. <laughs> I've been out as bi for... <laughs> See, that's the problem that I'm having. <laughs> like, there are real people that have struggled with bisexuality, and you're not one of them, girl. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know what? You have never struggled you- with. Do I really want dick and do I really want ass? Do I really love a man and do I really love a woman? Do I really want to actually be a part of this community? You ain't ne- that ain't huh? <clears throat> Pose has happened, you guys. And um, Electra is uh, gone back to her regular self. She was like, okay, well, girl, <laughs> it was eighty nine. I need to pay a bill or two, but it's ninety now. It's ninety, and I got my taxes back, <laughs> and I have a vagina. I don't have to put up with Oh, this. she does have a vagina. <laughs> she does have a vagina. You know, it wasn't as prevalent back then, but she got a vagina. Mm-hmm. Wow. I want one. I believe Oh, that. if I, can I come out tomorrow and say I want a vagina, or is that not allowed? If you want... If, uh, <laughs> I don't want to have Rachel Dolan's all lit up. I'm joking, but seriously. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that... Electra, I mean, like, old habits die hard. Mm-hmm. She is a bitch, and she is going to be a bitch. So I'm here for it. Yeah, um, tell they out here talking about some come down to the rally. Yeah, I thought the very opening scene of episode one was highly educational to people that still don't really get the gravity of the AIDS crisis at the end of the '80s, beginning of the '90s, and you know you can only hear from old heads so many times before you was like, mm, y'all being dramatic. And hopefully this show shows them the real dramatics behind it and that people that lived through it or were close to age of living through it Mm -hmm. aren't being dramatic. No, there were literally people dropping like flies that they didn't have nowhere to put them. Eight, nine, ten funerals a week? They didn't have nowhere to put them. They put them in pine boxes and wherever they could bury them because the families weren't claiming bodies. The families couldn't pay to bury these people that just died at the drop of a hat they with no, want the no bodies insurance. In their neighborhoods, because like the girl said, the secretary at the desk, we don't know how this is spread. Yes, they didn't want the bodies in their neighborhoods, and so they treated them like trash. Put them on that other island where you have to take a ferry to it. Yes. Wow. Wow. And we have come from that to arguing about whether prep is a realistic option or not. Prep is for hoes. See? You're a pine box. I was playing along with the scenario. <laughs> wow, I was playing with the scenario. <laughs> Justice for me. Um, so that's what I mean. That's the contrast uh-huh. of where we are in 2019. So if we go back to, I think, was it 91 or 92? That was 90. Oh, was it 90? Okay. Mm-hmm. They said they opened the episode with saying it was 90, 1990. And if we jump forward to 2019... Think about the discussion 30, that they were. 29 would, years? Her dirty 30 coming up. Yeah, it's yeah, 20, her, 29 years, yeah. Yeah, her dirty 30 coming up. Oh. Shout out. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I almost told her myself. Woo! Ow! <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I, 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 I'm not telling that part yet. Anyway, um, 29 years ago. Yeah. Is when this happened, mm-hmm. and so we can fast forward that time frame to now, to where there Trump is, is president. Trump is president. Woo! Um, there is cages. so many insurances available, assurances available. The for, boss is the damn educational secretary. Well, that's. <laughs> I think that's temporary. And we'll we see. still arguing about prep. Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> we are. We shouldn't be, but. Um, I'm happy to see Poppy is coming into his own. He, he um, coming in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they identify him as Dominican. I didn't think that he was Dominican, but sure, let's go with that. This your brother. I guess that's my brother. Yeah. Um, he is looking like a snack more this season. An uh, evening think. snack or a morning snack, like before the lunch mm-hmm. break or like, oh girl, then they're gonna be late because mm, I got something to do at the work. No, I'm definitely a morning snack. Like mm, he, he's small, a, mm. a morsel. You don't want to get full and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like how they're showing the relationship between him and Angel. Uh huh. Um, in a house because if you know anything about houses, they there's a lot of fucking that goes on within the house. People have relationships in the house. 
So you didn't see episode two yet, or you just don't want to spoil episode two? Uh, yet? We're talking about episode one. Okay, I'm just asking you about episode two because why are you asking me about episode two? These themes are presenting themselves. Thank you. Get with the program. Um, you was homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> you look like anyway. It. So in episode one, we are delving into their possible relationship and I thought it was really positive because possible relationship was between Poppy and Angel. Yeah. Oh, theory alert. <laughs> they they were I, they were I, dating. I, 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 anyway, I thought it was a good representation in episode one because it's something that happens in real life houses. Okay. Um I thought that Angel's modeling gig should be a lesson to you, up and coming girls. Up and coming. Uh, we live in a time where everything is backed up on the cloud, and you can't go beat up nobody and get the negatives. So Whoopi was trying to tell them. So be positive about what you are doing in front of these people's cameras because they are not necessarily being positive about your image. I understood her journey though. Yes, I it understood was, her journey as well. Stuff like that was going on back then. It was nineteen ninety. Yeah. Stuff like that was going on back then. But the the purpose of it is to learn from that, Amen. so you don't make the same mistake in two thousand nineteen that she All made in nineteen ninety. Lessons, the gay family lessons. There's a lot of lessons to be learned in pose. Yeah, we're here for it. Absolutely. Finally, um, Blanca's AIDS diagnosis uh, took me out because I am just someone that I be- I believe in foreshadowing, and I don't want the show to go on without Blanca's character. But I see shit going on that I don't want to see. I th- well, she's got to die. That that's what that's that's where I see it. I'm like, just like I don't want to see. Gonna be a mix. I don't even see her dying in season three. I see her dying at the end of this season because they're doing time jumps. They've already agreed to, and don't, we're not gonna get to. We're gonna talk about uh, season three about here for it, but um, they've already agreed to doing time jumps, and so this episode, this season is already done. Season three, mm-hmm. presumably. They're going to do also another time jump from the early 90s to the mid 90s. And it's going to destroy me if they kill that character. If and or when. Because I feel like it's a, it's just only a matter of time because the doctor gave her fucking AZT. If you know anything about AZT, you know anything back about then. what's going on back, back at, with AZT back then. It was only a fast track to anyone that had HIV and or AIDS. To the pine coffin that we saw at the very beginning of but the episode then, one, I it was didn't see only the fast track. That's the research only. was so trash. I'm like, y'all girls. I think the Yale, research about the show or the research, the research of ACT of ACT, like oh, yeah. Yale was started like 1900, and like Harvard was started like 18 so and so. Johns Hopkins was started like 1925. What is all these universities and colleges? And y'all said to y'all's the the best white men's the world have to offer, and y'all legacy fish, and y'all just get done all this research. Y'all are so educated, but god damn it, this this virus, this blood disorder, the water girls out. The girls just can't. Uh, 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 sir, 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 we we just don't even have the answer, sir. So was y'all still getting pay raises? Cause I know if I go to work and I ain't did my job and I ain't found out what was wrong and I didn't create the damn solution for the customer. I don't get no pay raise. And I ain't got too many more days left at work <laughs> if I don't figure it out. Well, medicine is a practice, and that's what they've been using as an excuse for this whole time. But in practices and working out hy- hypothesis, you come to a conclusion you at some point. Three times and it <laughs> and you look at your study and say, well, you know what the shit that we are prescribing to girls? It's not working. They're killing the girls faster. How many conferences you got to go to? I can't go to the 89 conference, the 90 conference, and the 91 conference and know that it's not working. AZT was discovered like 85, 86. I know we're in 90 now on the show, but AZT was not that girl before Pose picked it up in 2019 no. to do a look back. <clears throat> but again, like I said, I, I just feel like all of that is foreshadowing to the untimely death of Blanca. Well, people have lived 35 and 40 years um, being HIV positive. But that's not that's And having different. AIDS. So I'm just going to um, call it in the cloud, not the Amazon Prime cloud, but the other cloud. 
that she will be one of those survivors. I hope so. I don't. I don't, I don't feel that that's the case. Well, don't I think feel. That I do, feel differently. That's bitch, girl. We about to be on hiatus again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also, we also have another HIV positive character in Pray Tell. And so, Pray Tell could be someone that lives on. Because I don't feel like the popularity of Billy Porter is going to let him leave the show anytime soon. When Billy Porter leaves the show, the show yeah, almost probably is be done. He's the Kerry Washington of this. So, I, don't, I feel like Billy Porter can be that... Um, bridge to talking about well I'm HIV positive but I'm doing everything healthy and right and I'm taking herbal supplements instead of the white man's medicine sure but I think that they're they're gonna hit us in the fucking heart by the end of the season to kill Game Monica. of Thrones Ugh, these girls yeah we should have never gave y'all host Game of Thrones cause there's some shit Game of Thrones would do like Game of well Thrones Game of Thrones would have like, killed yeah. you on the first episode <laughs> Game of Thrones would be like uh, pause I'm like uh uh-uh, uh no not yet so unfortunately, but hopefully, since Janet Mock has these great new opportunities at Netflix, if they kill Blanca, aka MJ Rodriguez, mm-hmm. then she can just get a new job over at Netflix. But it is going to hurt my gay heart because the whole house gonna have to do a. She's been telling Angel that girl, you are gonna have to take care. You are gonna have to pick up the mantle after I'm gone. I'm trying to make sure you get a check, ma'am. <laughs> and Angel is still. The typical human. child. She's a human. I'm not saying she's doing any, years anything old. wrong. Yeah, yeah, she's still figuring out herself, figuring out her lane. But you also have mama telling you, okay, I might not be here next year. You might have to be mama next year. So I post so on how, you next week on Patreon. It's going to be so good. Oh, it is because yes, it's going to be good. We're not we're not spoiling episode two yet. But um. It speaks to a lot of things that happen in black households, people of color households, even when you have to grow up faster than you want to, and then you should we have to. Do. Oh, I'm going to talk to my therapist about this more now. Because Angel is still basically a baby in the house. Mm-hmm. She just got here last year, and now she's... Her gender identity she's, struggles. Yes. She's an adult. It, this body dysmorphia struggles. She's also now um, in line, in line of succession, that if something happens to Blanca, she's got to be responsible for she's the Don Jr. six to seven yeah. other uh, house members. Including of- Electra. Imagine. Girl. <laughs> mm. And Electra was late on her rent. And then she's like, I shouldn't have to be held to the standard. These other girls don't have to pay. Pose has... It is the best thing on TV right now. There's nothing else better than what's going on in Pose. And so, um, we were reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race, obviously, but then she went off and the winner won. So, we will continue to be reviewing Pose. Um, Mm -hmm. Next week, our review of Episode 2 will be on Patreon. So, at least for $1 a month, you can get over to our Patreon Mm -hmm. right now. So that you... We'll get our episode two and maybe episode three review. Oh, so uh, that is all I have in Dracar's topics this week. Um, <laughs> Arrest that book? Yes. Yes. Um, Who? Simon says. Who? Please arrest Ed Buck. Get him the fuck out of here. He's still on the sh- these city streets again. Another episode. Another. Not episode. Another thing that no one is talking about we let that shit go he still has the the power the access and the opportunity to kill more black gay men and uh as long as we have any episode up as long as we have power electricity and alcohol it is going to be fuck and arrest ed buck for life and i don't care which order you do it in this week in social studies, I'm going to have a story. I got a question, but I don't remember which part of the story. My question for you was in, so I'm just going to tell the story. And my story has a message, okay? I'm a, um, the Ava DuVernay of storytelling. Mm. So let's see, story times. Okay. Gay activist Christopher Karras, K-A-R-A-S, um, announced his human rights violation lawsuit against Canada in 2016 because... 
um, his blood tests were coming back negative for HIV, no viruses, no uh, child, no cum. And the people were saying down to the federal law that he couldn't donate his blood because um, he possibly have had um, hunched another man within the last one calendar year. And so the people at the federal courts were like, well, girl, we um, took it down from five years to one year. Y'all should be grateful and going on about y'all day. Leave us alone. Stop having sex. So are they trying to kill gay people? I mean, like, what are we doing? Because if I'm not having sex, the mental, mental health issues are going to flare up. And I'm already having mental health issues and using sex as my advice. So what are we doing? Oh, child. I just had to get triggered. <laughs> I can't pronounce this fancy doctor's name, but I think it's Dr. Krasner. It's a J in there for some reason. Krasner. Krosner. Krosner at the British CDC up in Canada in 2017 said that there had been discussion to allow gays in relationships to donate blood because it's been said that gays in relationships don't have as much risky sex as single gay people do. Do you or you giggle? What they mean? You they didn't. They need to do more studies because <laughs> relationships mean in the progressive gay world today that I am free to do a lot of things that I want to do. I just come home and sleep with the same nigga every night. That don't mean that I'm only. Fu- I'm just fucking him. That don't mean that I'm fucking other people. Quote unquote hashtag safe. So. More research needs to be done. Yeah, so I put in my notes in parentheses. I completely disagree because once I find somebody I can take the condom off with, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep my business to myself. So, but that's what I put in parentheses. Um, I'm doing all the risky, risky stuff when I find a man. Yeah, like if you coming to the desk and you saying like, "Babe, you're the only one I'm giving all this to," and I'm coming to the table and I'm like, "Well, girl, I'm my contract is solely with your organization." We taking the condom off. <laughs> I might even get into a little scat. Who knows? I might get oh, into wow. a little piss play. Who knows? If your results come back the way they need to and mine come back, let's discuss. Anyway, in October 2018, there was a company called Canadian Blood Services. They, you know, they the um the the major blood donor girl, Canadian Blood Services, told their version of the FDA. In this story time That um, they support Chris's lawsuit And they asked the um, Canadian FDA To lower the uh, Minimum to three months Because like girl look As the Canadian blood services We run enough tests to know Within three months if A person don't name blood So your federal law is dumb I mean like imagine the major the major blood company Coming out and telling the federal law girls That they dumb <laughs> Who you so, as of May 8th, 2019, Chris won his lawsuit um, in effect of June 1st of this year, so um, about 20 days ago. Um, yeah, it went into effect that gay men, if you have not had a sexual encounter within the last three months, you can donate blood in Canada. You can also do the same thing in Britain. It was somehow authorized over there around the same time. So, um, the moral of my story, first and foremost, I told you it was a moral to my story. Catch up, America. What are y'all doing? We're doing it everywhere else in the world, but y'all still over here wanting to argue about um, should Joe Biden apologize for something? Um, should Klobuchar, I don't even know who she looked like. Klobuchar, it's Klo- She's a white woman. See, look, we worried about what she doing. Um... How we can divide the Democratic vote in 2020 when there are people out here that need blood and they are dying because they're not receiving the blood. Um, Today, I went to the National um, Institute of Health website and here in Washington, D.C., they are begging African-Americans to donate blood because the National Health Organization in America is trying to do studies on sickle cell and they don't have any blood so while y'all trying to kiki and laugh and giggle at the current headline is Betsy DeVos's yacht crashed, black people are dying. Okay, the other key. Okay. Um, perseverance is key. 
find allies in your mission work and remain steadfast towards your goals. Because apparently all it took was for um, Christopher Carras to sue the damn girls up in Canada. Um, get everybody on his side. I mean, like, put some leadership skills to work. We all share the same goal. We all think this federal law is dumb. One, why do we all have to waste two years of our lives, millions of dollars in um, federal government studies? But I'm going to remain steadfast because I know that in the end, people will benefit from this. So, shout out to um, Canada for reversing their dumb policy about, well, if you're gay, you, if you haven't had sex within five years, then you can donate blood. And now it's down to three months. Look at that. And that wraps up my story time. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, definitely an a issue that can be easily fixed. Because even when people give blood... That blood still is tested for so many different things before it makes it back into the It's patient. tested for herpes. It's tested for chlamydia. They got to make sure a lot of other blood... Before will, it's yeah. taken back into a patient population and even then filtered. Um, so it, some of the some of the practices are very archaic in that, in that aspect. Uh, hopefully we'll get past it in the United States. Because yeah. <clears throat> we already passed it in the military. In military, no one, no one asks. Oh, well, you fuck boys. <laughs> it's oh, we need blood. There is a shortage. There is twenty people injured right now. Always give me your blood. We will fix and figure out the other shit later. Um, this week in sexual health, welcome back to the Sexperts Casting Couch. Um, I want to talk about the dangers of analingus. And why you should make your peaches uh, wrench off before you put your mouth on them. Um, I know that... It feels like that uh, Rick or gonorrhea. Yes. Ooh. Yeah, that's where we're going. Oh. <laughs> um, I know that it's kind of a, a little bit more popular nowadays to um, smell more natural and... Shower less for certain types of sex scenes, and it is even being requested more. Of oh, don't shower. I just want to smell what you smell like naturally. Musty. Yeah, Mm -mm. I'm not requesting it. Yeah, actually, you requested it earlier. (laughs) You're a fucking liar. Um, (laughs) but (laughs) oh, my tea got spilled. That was my fetish. I was telling you. Okay. Um, so I know that those things are becoming more popular, but when it comes to the analingus route, you want to make sure that the person that you are doing these fetishy things with, um, is clear from other things besides a little bit of musk. Huh? So, um... Health.com is reporting that herpes, genital or oral, uh, parasites, hepatitis A, syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and even strep throat can be passed when conducting analingus. Analingus is any time that you put any part of your mouth on someone else's ass Rub areas. your dick against the hole. Well, that's not fully analingus. That's... that's just you doing almost sex. You're still exposed to herpes. Yes, you are still exposed to herpes with that, but that's not what we're talking about on today. Analingus is also known as rimming. Uh, oh. Eating booty, eating eating the groceries, whatever the kids want to call it on today. Um, it's risky for transmission of uh, sexually transmitted diseases and infections because the presence of stool and um, other gastro gastrointestinal uh, fluids come out of that area regularly and if it's not cleaned those same gastrointestinal juices and things you will ingest through your mouth when you are licking the peaches or groceries or whatever you're doing especially if it, this is of someone that is a stranger to you that you are not aware you know their habits. of their do they have habits Ooh, child, it's not mm, yeah, maybe they not maybe they don't <laughs> Um, maybe it just smelled good to you in the moment and you just thought you know put your mouth on it. That's a no. <laughs> no, I said no. No, no, no. Say it in Portuguese. <laughs> um 
It's still no. <laughs> <coughs> um, while infections on the skin, such as herpes and syphilis, can pass between partners during analingus, the person performing oral sex is more vulnerable to parasites, including hepatitis A um, and other gastrointestinal illnesses, to include being um, foodborne illness sick. Um, so people don't attribute it to eating booty because they forgot that they ate booty and they were <laughs> and so they remember that I had a bowl at Chipotle the other day and maybe that's why I got a stomach bug. Oh, I got food poisoning. I got food poisoning because I ate something at Chipotle the other day. But you, you also else. ate that boy as well as the bowl at Chipotle. Mm, every it should be about equal. Maybe I got the stomach bug from Chipotle. Maybe I got it from that boy that I was eating his booty. Ooh. So <laughs> those are safe. those are why those are the dangers of analingus. Is not to say that you should not engage in them. It's that uh, you should be smart in knowing um, the person's habits. The person's current status of different STIs and STDs, and if you don't, and you just gotta eat it, um, yeah. dental dams are also available. I just gotta eat it. Dental dams are also just available. Gotcha. If you don't have a dental dam, you have never seen a dental dam before, because I know me working in health spaces is easy to find dental dams. In health spaces. Outside of health spaces that I've worked, it's not easy to find I dental had dams. Never really Ex- seen exactly, and so if you don't have access to dental dams, you can make a dental dam out of a condom. All you do is take the condom and cut the condom in half, or tear it, or uh, it's 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 hard to tear it with your hands. It's Unless easier you don't to use cut. the end piece. Oh, I don't, oh I'm telling my story. Oh, ah, I don't, I didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you well you put up a video on how to tear a condom with your hand <laughs> because why were you trying to tear a condom with your hand? What is your? I was not trying to tear a condom with my hand. Things were happening. Okay. Oh, you were someone was trying to stealth you. I uh, plead the fifth okay. uh, without okay. the presence of my attorney. Okay. <laughs> a lesson that we should all learn from when they see us that we talked about on the last week. I played the fifth without the princess of my time. They like we talked about on the last attorney. time that y'all heard from us. Anyway, again, if you don't have access to a dental dam, um, a condom can serve okay. as a dental dam if you just cut it in half or no. Trey, go in the kitchen, look in the junk drawer. <laughs> or if you know how to tear Does it apart Trey by know hand. Does Trey where my junk drawer is? Do I want him going through my junk drawer? Uh, th- this is complicating the activity. He might as well just eat it and pray about it. No, uh, <laughs> no. I'm not saying for me. I'm just saying what's going to happen. It's so on the receiving end. As a receiver, you are still susceptible to different things. You're just not as susceptible to as many things. Because you know they were saying where one part that had the rectal gonorrhea or chlamydia. The other partner had the oral version of it mm-hmm. in their throat. Yes. So, girl, y'all are transmitting the things, and y'all need to protect y'all from what you say it's called. Ana. Analingus is just the. Use it in the sentence. I like to perform analingus on fat booty niggas. <laughs> Me too. Hashtag, I don't know. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't. You're, You're a liar. You're scary. That is this week in sexual <laughs> health. Please be healthy and sexy out there at the same damn time. Okay. What is the song for you? Did you find the question? I, I let you tell me what's next. So you tell me what's next. All right. Um, what is the song for your soul? The song for my soul this week is a rumor. Not by Lindsay Lohan. Oh, that's the only one I know. <laughs> I was like, okay. This song came out last year. His name is Lee Bryce. It's a country ballad, very radio friendly. Um, it starts off with, well, girl, you know I've been knowing you for a long time. Girl, you know I knew you for a long time. And then, so, um, down to the one bar in the city. We get down here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We could up. And now there's a rumor going around that we hunching. Rumor has it. And he like, we can be hunching, and we could be doing some other things, too. Let's just go make it real. And I was like, look at Trey uh, being forward. 
Um, cause I'm tired of being demure. I'm t- like, okay, so I got to do is three nights. I got to do it for like three months, and then the room gonna get around town. Then Trey gonna be like, we should go make this official. What? Trey know what he want? He gonna use his vocal piece and mm. um, express it. Ugh. I'm here concept. for it. What a concept! I'm here for it. Cause y'all struggle with that. Who's y'all? Y'all be like, well, I mean, where it said it's cool. I mean, I don't really want to put no title off nothing. That means I don't want to fuck with you, and you just <laughs> not figuring it out. <laughs> well, rumor by <laughs> Lee Bryce. <laughs> Check in, bitch. <laughs> so yeah, Lee Bryce wants to make it official. Okay, is so, he a white man? I don't know. We got little Nas look, X right we, now doing. Uh, and they didn't want to. Get, they didn't want to give him his things. I'm just. Saying. And then they turned around and they say the other the remix. They use the. I'm gonna say the other word. That white man featured on the remix. They put his name first and treat the black boy as like is his. He's the one featured. Yeah. No, it's my song, and the white man is the feature. Mm-hmm. So you think they just automatically gave a black man the feature? No, I don't think he's not the mainstay. But anyway, shout out to Lee Bryce, rumor the song for myself because you can just turn it. It's not something that you got to watch the video for or nothing. <laughs> it does have a video, but it's just a radio friendly something that plays while things are going on. It's cute. It's really cute. Party. Uh, <laughs> the song for my soul is not a white country song. Kimmy Blanco. It's also she's also a white woman <laughs> at these these days anyway. Um, it is by a, a black woman. Oh, oh look at dark skin black woman oh. at that. Fantasia, Jasmine Sullivan, tease. They work together with Brandy coming too. She will work with Brandy. I think they don't like each other. Um, it's coming. It's on Fantasia's new album that's coming out. No, not my the it's, artist it's, I'm talking about. Fantasia's already announced it. Oh, okay. I don't know what you're talking. Okay, no, shut no. my fat ass up. Please wow. do because I, I don't think that they like each other. <laughs> anyway, um, the song goes: mirrors on the ceiling, cameras on the corners of my bed. I barely know you, but I'm feeling like you really did something to my head. Mm-hmm. It's close to midnight. And I just want to be up with you here. Mm-hmm. And I'll be all right as long as I feel your body right there. Slut. <laughs> it, seems, it seems so crystal clear. I know that everybody's somebody's freak. Oh, everybody's I like this song. Somebody's ah. freak. Uh. The question is, who's oh. are you? Okay. <laughs> Come on. Can I be your? Can I be your freak? Oh. I'm surprised this Can I be your your freak? They do like each other. Hold on, who don't like each other? Is? No, I don't think Kelly and Brandy like each other. Anyway, the song <laughs> is by. <laughs> I was like, who don't like? But Mm-mm. Kelly no. has a song more records than Brandy. Mm, I'm. That's uh, not the subject that we're on right now. <laughs> okay, you like... do a deep dive later, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't <laughs> think they like each other. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Kelly Rowland song "Freak" yeah. is one of my favorite Kelly Rowland songs. I've heard you play that. I've heard you play that in the car. It is my I'm like, jam. We are on the way to the club. I don't know why he's playing this because I'm looking for a freak. It's a nice song, but I just feel like why is he playing this in the car on the way to the club? Okay, I'm looking for a freak. Yeah, sure, Jan. I tell my story. <laughs> um, "Talk a Good Game" came out six years ago this week. True, and I think it was her best solo studio album. Uh, it had some. It had gems. Is this the one with ice on it? No. You like ice? I like that song. I C E. It was on the one with motivation, probably. I don't know. Yes. Uh, it was on Dirty Laundry. Uh, and yeah, that was a good Red Wine. Yeah. That album. You a Kelly Rowland fan? Wow! Look at you. You just named like four or five Kelly Rowland songs. I can name like seven, but anyway. Oh, wow. Um. I thought it was her best album, and it came out six years ago. Can't believe that that was that long ago. Old. Um, but Freak was one of my favorite songs because I just didn't see Kelly Rowland as that kind of freak. But Kelly Rowland obviously is as freaky as me. She was recently married. She also talked about Nelly beating her up on that same album, too. So. <laughs> Ooh, that jumped out. <laughs> Time for my soul, Freak by Kelly Rowland. 
Okay, listener questions. Make sure you guys um, chill. Add us. What's the email? Our personal inboxes. Y'all do that anyway. <laughs> Just gonna do that anyway. I'm trying to find my note. Okay, it says send us your listener questions to hereforitpod at gmail.com or in the inbox where you find us on social media. Don't get mad at me because this one question in here that I can tell now that you really were trying to skip, but the, your listeners asked, so I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to answer. At Chris. If they know anything about me, they should be like, oh, I know he's going to answer like this. <laughs> <laughs> at Chris. Underscore not underscore brown on Instagram. K N O T. No. Chris not brown on Instagram. <laughs> Only a Cardi B hater would understand. What I was like, what's going on? Not because of her not on her head when she got hit in the head. Wow, groundbreaking. <laughs> anyway, on Instagram, not he writes. Uh, we t- I asked. Um, what are your questions when we come back next week? Which I want to hear us talk about. And he said, talk about how stand culture is getting out of control. Oh, girl. <laughs> I'm like, which group? I mean, because the Beehive did act the Yes, we got down in that woman comments. We had saw a visual representation of Beyonce being annoyed. And we did not have to wait for the supporting evidence. And maybe that's how we got Central Park 5. But as the Beehive, we did not wait for supporting evidence. We don't know what was going on. We did not have a language interpreter to tell us that she was just asking him what he would have liked a lime with his um, vodka soda. We we did not have the time. We just um, alleged. Did we allege? Nope. We had. Uh, she was guilty. <laughs> the proof was Beyonce's face. Case closed. <laughs> Next case. That's that's the end. Beyonce was annoyed. Her fans jumped into. Defend her being annoyed because she's Beyonce and she can't be like, girl, get the fuck out my goddamn I face. hard enough. I can't even step out down to the basketball. I would say the BBW game. The basketball game. Because if she did, then y'all would have been like, ooh, Beyonce's aggressive. Why she out here Beyonce attacking women? Beyonce don't never step out the house. Well, she's I just a feminist. The game. Why is she a feminist attacking other women? And so we let Beyonce just show her emotion in the face and say, okay, we got you. <laughs> we get- and then um, I think her publicist, I don't know if it's Yvonne or Yvette, but Yvette was like, um, Beyonce does not like when you guys spew hate her name. And the girl's like, girl, Yvette, shut up. Because when Beyonce don't like something, she tells us. Shut up. <laughs> Directly. Now, Beehive, it's just a towel. Beyonce, you kind of right. But you got to throw another towel. <laughs> you got to throw another towel. Go get 30 more towels from the back. <laughs> so this is going to be a peaceful area. So when Beyonce wants the beehive to be quiet and sit the fuck down, she tells us directly. And she didn't say shit. Okay, but it says talk about how stand culture has gotten out of control. Are there any other stands? Basketball stands. And so y'all don't have the same goddamn energy or passion when somebody... Um, riots because their team lost in a basketball game or in a hockey game or in a baseball game or in a football decades. game. That's the same fucking culture. It's stand culture as well. You standing for a whole team of niggas that you don't know, you ain't never met, and you probably ain't even paid enough money to go to the goddamn game. But they stand about that, and we we talking about people attacking old girl on Instagram. No, the stand culture is when y'all tear up whole cities because your city won or your city lost. That's stand culture. Y'all can get the fuck out of my face with somebody left a, a B under this girl's Instagram and we have this a part of our conversation. We have to talk about it. No, we don't. The communication was was there. I'm trying to move on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At Really Row, also on Instagram. I think there was more questions. I'm going <laughs> to, next week on the Patreon, when I find the questions, I'm going to answer them all on the Patreon. But anyway, it says Really Row writes, I really want to hear what y'all thought about the Taylor video. No. There's combo <laughs> around it, and the most interesting combo I've seen is quote Rihanna isn't attacked like the rest of the pop girls. She's not held up to the same standards. Okay, so what do we think about? Okay, it's a two parter. It appears. I really want to hear what y'all think about the Taylor video. I don't. Um, she brought a whole bunch of drag queens. What is his name? Home. Her faux best friend. What is his name? The YouTuber girl? Uh-huh. I also don't think about her either, so... 
Todrick Hall. She brought Todrick Hall in to co executive produce it. Mm-hmm. Um, and on his reaction video, girl, you was there, girl. What are you doing a reaction video for? So he was saying he called in a lot of favors. He called a lot of his friends, uh, favors and friends. And he did his job as the co- co executive producer. I mean, like, I need this to be hot. Can you come down? Taylor's going to fly you out. So, I mean, like, there's not like you're struggling for anything. Um, so just come down to the Taylor Swift video. That's what his job was as a executive producer. And then, you know, like, towards the, I don't know if you know, but towards the end, there was a lineup of all of these drag queen impersonators of all the hottest girls that were in there, like Trinity K. Bonet was Cardi B, mm-hmm. Riley Knox, who is the number one Beyonce impersonator. I know the girl that in the Before I Let Go video thinks she's the, the one, but she's. Very close runner up. She's, she's a, in the top two she, and she is number two. <laughs> yeah, but Riley Knox is number one and Riley Knox made the Taylor Swift video. So, uh, you know, like they had all the little impersonators, but there was no Rihanna up there. There was a ponytail impersonator and all the. I think Tatiana was the ponytail impersonator, but there are two different heights. Tatiana is like six foot three, four. Ariana Grande is like five foot one, two. But anyway. Um, so Rihanna wasn't up there And is she held to a different standard Than the other pop girls What are your thoughts on that She wasn't in the lineup um, It's an oversight Because By Todger Call By Todger Call And Taylor <laughs> Swift Because girl What I, It's an oversight The number one Female musician In America And she's not in the lineup It could be jealousy <laughs> they said jealousy matters <laughs> So that's our listener questions this week What are you here for? I just said what I'm here for Oh I'm sorry um, What do you want me to go? <laughs> Cause I got three things Seven things I can I can extend the list if I need to Well no I'll just go first because <laughs> this is probably Sarah Huckabee we- Sanders is quitting the White House And I'm absolutely here for it Ma'am just as a journalism major You got up there and lied And embarrassed yourself the same way that they would show President Trump lying, then they would display the fact right next to it. They would show Sarah Huckabee Sanders li- The president didn't say that. You are misrepresenting what the president spoke. Bitch! And then they go show the clip of the president. Oh, child, my president is black, Lord Jesus. Whoever this man is in the White House, that man in the White House, they will play the clip, then they will play you lying. If you look, where you get your journalism degree from? Turn it back in. <laughs> I'm so glad you're resigning, but all of the activity that you did while you were there, I'm not here for it. I just she's just embarrassing my profession like this. <laughs> I mean, we went to school, we made money, we got student loan debt. She have, she has a journalism degree, and then she just I can't even sit down and have dinner with my family. I'm being harassed, <laughs> bitch. Because you ain't got your big girl draws on, and you a big girl, a big Arkansas girl at that. And she's seriously considering running for governor of Arkansas, mm-hmm. according to reports. Right. I'm like, y'all telling lies like she up here telling lies. She better not be seriously considering nothing but finding a goddamn recliner, and hopefully it's name brand, and she can get zero percent financing. She needs a facial. You're not supposed to talk about women and their looks because that's racist. Okay. Or this anti-feminism or whatever. <laughs> it's the Democrats have made made it so. Uh! She needs a facial. My second thing is, and not the kind would come. I am absolutely here for it. today. Well, it's um, Juneteenth. Um, this week, Slay TV launched a new app. Um, Black gay content providers. They have their own streaming things going on with um, No Shade. We loved No Shade when it came out. Love at First Night. Tonight is the premiere of Love at First Night. They're on season three. Um, and Love at First Night premieres this fall. So That was the one with the roommates? With the roommates. Um, the guy slept with his roommate's ex-boyfriend, mm-hmm. but they actually ended up falling in love and being in a relationship mm-hmm. for two and a half, three years. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of free content on Slay TV app, like the new comedy series Reality Check. Make sure you check that out on Slay TV. And also, they have roundtable talks on Community. It's their gay version of The View. Um, and it's very color and trans inclusive, persons of color and trans. 
Uh, and there's some other premium content on there. The first seasons of the Chronicles is on there. Chadrick Journals is on there. They've licensed. They're like, hey girl, you shitted and slayed as a black gay content creator. Put your shit on our app. We'll send you a check at the end about the streams and the licensing and stuff. So premium content on there as well. But I'm really excited for Love at First Night. The next season is coming out this fall. So download the Slay TV app for free on your Android or your iPhone. And if you want to subscribe to the premium content, it's four dollars and ninety nine cent a month. I was like, I hate when they put the four. They should just say it's gonna be five oh eight. But they don't know what the taxes are in every state. So, shout out to the Slay TV app. I'm absolutely here for it. And fuck Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I'm glad you're resigning. Bye. Embarrassing me down to my job, in my industry. I can't go to the con- the journalism conference and get no peace. Pose has been renewed for season three. Um, and now episode two has aired. Like I said, we will be reviewing episode two on Patreon uh, before next week's episode and possibly episode three as well. Um, but it was notable to me this week, and that's why I'm absolutely here for it, that episode two hadn't even aired of this season before they had renewed season three. The only thing that we had gotten to see as the general public at the point when they had renewed season three was episode one. And the the numbers and <clears throat> the attention that it drew from all of social media, people in and out of the community. All of us watching. Listening, told them, hey, give Ryan Murphy and Janet Mock some more money to do this for another season because... This is obviously very profitable for us, and it's telling us it's telling well, it's telling our story. But that's not why these executives renewed it. No shade. They 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 could care. I won't say care less. They care a little bit about telling our story, but they care more about something that's trending, something that is getting these Nielsen views, something that is bringing a lot of attention to their networks. And when it's not, then they cancel it. And when it does, they renew it. And I'm happy. That enough of us got behind Pose in episode one for them to renew season three, no matter what happens in episode two or what happens in episode 10. So I want to make sure that we continue to support this show, whether we like it or not, whether we feel like the acting is bad or not, or whether we like what they're doing with the characters or not. This is the representation that matters to our community the most right now. And until something else comes over, that we feel like, you know what? Pose is nice, but that show, that captures us better than put all your time and effort behind this one show because we don't get two or three options right now. We got one. And with our one option, we need to put our dollars behind it, put our viewership behind it, and make sure that season two is already great and viewed we watch all of it season three is great and viewed we watch all of it and make them give us a season four because they gave us so many seasons of these mediocre ass shows that nobody cares about that's not even on dvd that's not in syndication and meanwhile she got nine seasons of something that nobody cares about i care about this we should care about this and i want i want to see more of the story Regardless of which direction that they go in. So I'm absolutely here for them uh, renewing it for season three. It is now come to... I just wanted to do the... I was like, I'm going to let you finish that. I was going to do the fan, but it was delayed because I'm drunk. So. Mm, blessings. Um, it is now come to our favorite part of the show. It is our last call. If you have alcohol available to you, I have a make sure... Lies, lies, <laughs> and more lies. Make sure that you take a shot with us to our last call. This will be our last subject, and then you will see us again next week. I promise. Oh, look at. <laughs> <laughs> My last call this week is to World Pride. Um, it started in the year. 2000, I said the year. Year. The year. I, I, wasn't, I was going to let you write. <laughs> Together. In 2000, under the Enterprise, let me make sure I'm tra- mm. telling the story. I'm a journalist. I just threw shade to the other girl for not being a journalist, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
the umbrella of being international products of the world. <laughs> so um, every year they get together during their conference and they decide where world pride should be. Um, and it was in Rome, and it's been it's going to be in some other nice places after this. But for 2019, thanks to um, Stonewall celebrating its 50th anniversary, World Pride is in New York City. And I'm just glad that um, the gay agenda is expanding. Look, okay? Y'all were trying to kill us. Y'all didn't want us to have rights. Uh, we're still working on the blood thing. But, you know, um, we're going to give blood. We're going to have pride. We're getting married out here. Just, I mean, the gay agenda we'll is... We'll get married! <laughs> the gay agenda is progressing. And meanwhile, all this hate and all this other bullshit y'all talking and now I want to expand Medicaid in the South and all, oh, we, we can hurt them if we don't expand Medicaid in the South. Oh, okay. Good luck. Um, world pride is like a thing. World pride. So... Um, I just wish y'all the best with all the hate y'all doing. But we're a thing. Thanks. And we're trending. <laughs> <clears throat> My last call is to um, Gina Rosero. Um, Gina Rosero is making history as Playboy's new, fully nude, centerfold issue of a transgender woman of color. color. Um, a few months ago, I talked about, um, the, just being late that Victoria's Secret's previous, uh, chief marketing officer was talking about, <laughs> about, it's laughable now. <laughs> yes. Um, and so then we had Miss Dragoon come out and say, oh, well, I can be a Victoria's Secret model. Self-financed. I can show you what the fantasy the looks like. We can serve fantasy coming down the stairway off. I can afford a fan can and, and some wings. Um, and so we reported on that as well. And I definitely thought that this was very important because during Pride Month, we are having our first transgender woman of color being the centerfold, being a big part of a Playboy magazine. Playboy being a, a enterprise of... Um, Oh Lord, here we go. What are you about to take south? Oh, here we go. Uh, their prize position is their centerfold. Model. Yes, but it is always. It's not always. It's typically a white cishet female to me. It, no, <laughs> uh, to entertain the masses that buy the Playboy magazine. Magazine culture is dying. So girl, and magazine culture is dying. And so are the marketing officers that believed that you had to be a white woman that was skinny with big titties to be the centerfold of these types of magazines. Because now we have a trans woman of color being a centerfold of these magazines and showing, if you look at any of these damn pictures, that I'm hot. I'm hot her. I am a reason to be talked about. Um... I am a reason for people to buy these magazines over the white girls with the big titties and the blonde hair that y'all been selling for decades. decades. <laughs> Literally decades. And so now if you want your little magazine to sell something now, you have to spice it up. Looks and like so a 20-year marriage. I'm I'm absolutely here for it. Uh Gina Rossero grew up in the Philippines and started competing in transgender beauty pageants at the age of 15. Um, she moved to San Francisco at the age of 19, uh, 17, excuse me, but went to Thailand at the age of 19 uh, for her gender confirmation surgery. And after that, has only, only modeled as a female, not as a transgender woman, not as anything other than a biological female, because she is a biological female at this point of her gender, not her gender com confirmation surgery. So I thought that was also an important part was. Um, they hired her knowing of her trans past, but since her gender confirmation surgery, she is now a woman by all sense and meanings of the term. So I'm absolutely here for it. Gina, continue to slay. The pictures are amazing. Um, and hopefully Playboy and other of the uh, other heteronormative magazines and um, publications will get behind 
similar thoughts. So that is my last call. Um, thank you guys so much for listening this week. Thank you guys so much for being patient with us while we were gone as well. Um, make sure you get over to our Patreon. There will be a link below to um, Patreon content that you can get right now. And we are promising future Patreon content for next week. Um, if you Ooh, are going to be... It was fun. The rooftop pool party and stuff. It was like a lot of fun. You want to do hood rat shit with your hood rat friends. Hot girl summer. Um, I'm hot boy Ronald, so girl, and I'm a butch queen. So. <clears throat> There's that. Um, if you would like to come out and hang out with us on Friday, you're going to be in the D.C. area. We're going to be at Casa Ruby after 6 p.m. Um, doing donations, talking to the girls, being a part of the community as we should be. Arrive on time. Um, it's not one of those show up at 7.30 type of events And stay tuned for a live event that we have coming up this summer Oh, you're teasing the girls, look at you oh, I am oh, I am yeah. That's why we be taking our break I am the Superman oh, T-H-E-S-U-P-A-M-A-N A.K.A. the second hole assassin Oh, that's new You reached the second hole now? Oh, I've always reached the second hole boom. They say as you get older, it shrinks Oh. Bless you. Uh, the revolution will be televised. Take your true vada, children. <laughs> Bye.